Hello, Nathan Judo. I'm here with Liam Keener this Thursday, and that means the midfielders. Oh, midfielders. No, I'm be that I could go for a lot longer, mate. Um, look, we, we, we've come to the darkest depths of Warsaw because I just saw this beautiful, beautiful kiosk stand, of which we will hopefully have fans back next season. Hopefully. And they will be able to, to buy an array of delicious foods. Uh, what would be your choice in the hot food section? You've got one to choose. Big. One to choose, Liam. Not just because of the regional room, but it has to be the Baltic Park. Actually, well, no, I tell you what, this is an important. It's my video today. We're going to choose one from each section before we start the midfielders because it's, it's a bit rubbish. So let's start. So, Baltic Park, I'm going to go for the. I'm going to go for a good old cheeseburger. You can't be a good old cheeseburger. You can't be a good old cheeseburger. Confectionery. Uh, Yorkie, I think. Yeah, I'm going to have to go Yorkie as well. I think Yorkie, you know, it's a, it's a man's. It's a man's. <laughs> no, you, can't you, can't that, you, can't you can't say that. You can't say that. You can't do, you can't do anymore. You can't do anymore. It's, uh, it's, uh, come on. Come on. I oh, know, but you're having it. Oh, oh Bob rolled me up. Bob rolled me up. Are you? Uh, white tea. <laughs> <laughs> Kids snack pack. Swifty snack pack. Uh, well, we're both getting that anyway. Oh, so, don't, I, I, I what? I don't mind a fruit shoot. Yeah, it's not bad. I don't mind a fruit shoot. I don't mind a sh it's just what you want your kids to have. A big sugar kick <laughs> just before just before they come out. And cold drinks, what are you having to, to quench your thirst? Well, I have to go Pepsi Max. You can't go wrong with Pepsi Never Max. Never had a Pepsi Max in my life. You're joking. Pepsi no. Max is the best. Is that, that's the best soft drink you can get. Oh, it's it's so terrible. Better, better than Diet Coke, better than Edward Spent Oil. Mace. Bottled water. I've got three Pepsi Max a day. <laughs> no, I don't really. <laughs> but I have one a day, pretty much, though. I think I had a Pepsi Cherry Max. I had two Pepsi Max yesterday, and I found a bit bad for having two in a day. Let's start the midfielders. <laughs> start the midfielders. Uh, right, OK. I mean, I've got a long list here, long Liam, list. of central midfielders, and well, not a lot of wingers, I'll be honest. Yeah. So let, let's go through them. Let's go through the people who are not with us anymore. Not, you know, I mean, they're still alive. <laughs> they're still alive. But, uh, yes. but yeah, they're not, uh, they're not Warsaw Football Club. Uh, Stuart Sinclair, Danny Guthrie, uh, Frank Vincent. Um, many, many, let's, let's talk about the main two of, uh, of Guthrie and Sinclair. You, 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 you liked Stuart Sinclair. You were a bit of a fan of Stuart Sinclair, exactly. weren't you? Not just, not just the, the go not just, the, not just the fact that he's one of the nicest blokes in football. <laughs> but, because, but his actual you know, physical yeah. attributes on the pitch. Genuinely, I, I think he's a good player. Um, I, 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 I thought he was OK. I thought he was steady him. away. I liked him. I thought um, he had injury issues <coughs> this season, didn't he? But I thought his... He was very similar to Liam Kinsella. His, just his, his dogged determination and ball winning in the midfield um, was, was brilliant. I, I thought it was great. The problem was I don't think it complemented the group because there was too many similar players mm. to him. Um, I thought he was a good player. Probably, you know, lost his legs a little bit. And, you know, I think it was probably... Um, Didn't lose his legs. They were not, <laughs> not literally. formally with us. He's actually not, not literally. Legs. Um, yeah, I think, you know, he might be age caught up a little bit, if I'm honest. Um, and he, he may drop out of the Football League if he is to carry on playing. Um, but I thought he was a good player, genuinely. Would he be a player that um, is going to get Walsall promoted next season? No. Because of Sam Perry coming in, Alfie Bates being there, Liam Catella being there, would he? Would I have kept him? Probably. Stop, stop, stop using all my names. Probably not. Yeah. I'll come out those names. Probably not, if I'm honest. But I, I still rate him as a player. I thought he was yeah. a good player. Um, and then, and then the the other man, Danny Guthrie. I mean, look, Strange. experienced. He was experienced, you mm. know, and, and obviously been about a bit and could spray a ball. You could see he yeah. still got that vision, yeah. but uh, it didn't work out, did it? He was just, he was slow. He was just too just slow. Too slow. Um, everything was, everything was slow. Um, I don't want to be too nasty, but you know, he was like he was running through custard at times. You know, like, it, it was just free call, free call. He was, he was, he was just too slow, too slow on the turn. Um, too slow of recovery, um, everything really. On the ball, with the ball at his feet, he was excellent. Mm. Um, but they couldn't get the, the ball to his feet often enough, and he was just he was just injured. Yeah. Two injury prone as well, yeah. and you can't have you can't have passengers um, in the squad because of injuries constantly. You have to have players who could bounce back easily, and mm. he just couldn't. Uh, Don't forget Frank Vincent. Frank, well. then, yeah, finish off. Strange, real strange one, Frank, because you know he played a couple games, and fans will tell you this as well. He looked, yeah. he looked like he had promise, yeah, and then he dropped off the face of the earth. <laughs> Literally, did. <laughs> Never saw him again. Virtually, I mean, he had a couple of sort of again, uh, not there. flat, round. Yes, yeah, but, yeah. you get where I'm going with this video. Yeah, we, it's got to Thursday now. We can have a bit of fun. Yeah, We're going through the serious stuff. You know what I mean? The sun's getting to us. Things <laughs> come in the shadows. He, um, yeah, it was a strange one. There's not really much to say about him, to be honest, because. 
he's a player who came through on loan at non-league at Torquay, did well, came on loan to the EFL, didn't do particularly well at Scunthorpe, came to Warsaw, started off okay, didn't didn't keep his place, hardly featured after that. Um, yeah. Not great. Not great, not, not great. great. Let's move on to the people who uh, who, who did do well. Yes. Um, Players Player of the Year, Liam Kinsella, um, scooped up at the end of the season mm. awards. Um, and look, great, great to have on board him too. He's, he's the type of guy you really need. He was my player of the season as well. Um, a large out of boy may have been had he not been sold. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Liam is similar to Max Malborn, as I was saying in the, in the Defenders video, is a guaranteed seven minimum out of ten, but often better than that. I genuinely think he is one of the best ball winning midfielders in the league, I really do. Um, I, th I think if you're going to get the best out of him and the best out of the squad, you have to complement him with mm. players around him. Um, and that means probably, if you're going to play two midfielders for example, probably a cre another creator next to him. Or if you're going to play a three with him and Sam Perry for example, uh, a creator in there next to him. You have to have someone who's going to carry the ball forward next to him, whether that's a two or a three, because he doesn't do that often, mm. um, it's not really his game, but he's a great presser, he'll, he'll press and press and press and win the ball back really well, high up the pitch and spring attacks, but he's not really going to score the goals or, or create the goals himself. Um, it'd be nice if we could add that to his game, but I don't sure. really think that is his game, to yeah. be honest. Um, again, I think he's a great asset to this club, um, I think he'll, he can be part of a promotion side at this team, at, at this club. Uh, if he's complemented with the squad around him. So that, that probably means signings or bringing Emmanuel Stevie back in to alongside him. So a pair, Alfie Bates and Sam Perry together, um, both both very promising youngsters. And I, I guess, you know, the start of the season, if you asked us, you said that Alfie Bates would be the guy who, you know, who, who would use that progression. He did progress again this season, you know, and I think he may be, you know, I think that he'll, he will take more time and another season will be, you know, I'm sure with his management team will really help him. But it was Sam Perry who was the guy who shone through in the end, and probably behind Alfie Bates, you'd say, to start the season, of course. Yeah. And uh, and then was ahead of him, was playing ahead of him, and, yeah. and kind of relegated Bates to the bench uh, for the latter part of the season. I remember we did a, a podcast a few months ago, and you were predicting who your player of the season would be, and you said Alfie Bates. Mm. Um, mm. And at the time, it seemed like that was a possibility. Yeah. He was having an exceptionally good season. He, he really improved on, on last season. Um, and it did stall a little bit, um, which he had in his first season as well. Um, you know, and that's going to happen with young players, it's the inconsistency. He stalled a little bit and then lost his place eventually to Sam Perry. And Sam came in and I, I described it as a straight genius from Brian Dutton bringing him in and it really was, he was really, really, really good. Very, very comfortable on the ball, good in the air, got good vision for a pass, good in the tackle, mm. um, a pretty much an all-round centre defence midfielder. I don't think he's got any particularly poor trait. Perhaps, you know, he needs to bulk out a little bit, which is what he's admitted himself. He needs yeah. to put on a little bit, probably a little bit of weight and, and just fill out a little bit. And that will come with age poor as well simple, and yeah. chills a little bit. Um, I mean, you're still waiting, but it's fine. I mean, I mean hopefully for, for some it will come up, yeah. Are you talking about me for a second? <laughs> you, come on, come on. I'm not going to do it. I don't, I don't want to, you know, there's, there'll be ladies watching that. I'll be using a thumbnail of that, so you can do it if you want, so, you know what I mean? Some ladies will get excited. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, goodness. Sam, if you want any tips, let me yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tips, did you say? <laughs> tips, tips, tips. tips. Okay. He's got me on Twitter. Let, okay. me, let me know if you do anything. He's going to just DS sliding to the yeah, old yeah, DMs. Yeah. Um, look, I think he's, uh, I think, potentially, depending on the system, you could, you could build around him mm. this season. And he's going to have to come in and out, and in some ways he's similar to Lincoln Seller. I think he's better on the ball than Lincoln Seller is, but he, in some ways, is similar. Um, and he is more defensive minded, so you're going to have to balance it up in terms of um, who you play alongside who, and you're going to need a creator in there as well, or at least a box to box kind of midfielder, mm -hmm. someone who can um, arrive late on the edge of the box um, uh, and you know, pop up with a few goals. And they, need, they need more goals spread across the team as well. Um, but as an option, great player. Him, Kinsella, Bates, I think, are three very good options. Mm -hmm. Um, but you have to remember, two of them are 19, so you've got to probably bring someone else in there to other side as well. I say Kinsella was, was your player of the season. I mean, if the if the season was the last 12 or 13 games, then Manuel Sadivi would have had a great shout because I thought he came on leaps and bounds. Um, really took it upon himself. I mean, he was taking every dead ball position wherever it was in the field at one stage, but added goals to his game, added a maturity to his game, and kind of kicked on. We kind of saw flashes. 
and he was in and out, in and out, in and out. And I thought, you know, when 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 Adebayo left and you know Josh Gordy wasn't work out for him and they were struggling, he took up that mantle to make sure that they got over the line and called, scored some important goals as well. Yeah, he's the kind of player that Warsaw are going to want to chip in with some goals mm. next season, goals and assists. And we we put him into the midfield category because for me. He is a number eight, I think. Um, he is that kind of box-to-box midfielder. He did drop deep at times under Brian Dutton towards the end of the season, and you know he did pretty well. Mm. He looking after the ball, winning it back, winning it back deep, springing counter attacks, mm. and you know arriving late to the box to to you know create an opportunity for himself. So um, yeah, well, actually the, the goal at Scunthorpe that he scored, he, yeah. you know, whips the ball cross field to Hayden White, makes the run into the box, get, wins the header and scores mm. top mm. corner. So. Um, that is. Uh, he's a menace for defenders if he yeah. gets in. If he, if he does he's, he's, very, very, he's very, very talented, a very good player. Um, the problem is, he, he went arguably six, seven months without really showing it at uh, Warsaw. Mm. He's, he's, he's got to be doing it consistently. He's got it in his locker to do it. He got some confidence. Brian Dutton gave him that, gave him a run in the team. If he gets that next season, he, he, can, he can be a creator alongside your Rory Holdens uh, and, and then the defensive minded midfielders as well. We mentioned Rory Holden, we're going to the wingers, Rory Holden, Wes McDonald, Terry Wright, two not with us, well, one McDonald obviously is not there, Terry Wright has gone back to Aston Villa, Rory Holden is here next season, I mean, it says it itself when we've got three wingers, that that's going to be a huge, huge part of uh, this, this new team to, to bring a few players in. Well, add Jack Nolan to that as well, who's a, a winger who's not here anymore, uh, and Rory Holden's not really a winger to No, not really, he's, no. He's, you know, he, he has played there and I think, you know, his first season struggled. This season he played there a couple of times and did okay. Mm. He is a number ten, really. He's much better centrally. Um, but when he does drift off the, off the wing, you, you know he, he has caused problems at times. But he is a, he is a ten. Mm. Um, and I like I mean I liked Wright. I thought I thought yeah. he was a good player. I'd be quite happy to get him back next season. Yeah. To be honest, I think he could kick on and have a really good season next year. Wes McDonald was probably one of the biggest disappointments for me this season. Yeah, I think Tyree could be good to get him back. I think another year here, but he may look higher up the pyramid Maybe. possibly. Um, he's, you know, he's very highly thought of at Villa, so um, it'd be good to get him back. But it's, it's one of them. Um, I think there's someone. Like, that's where someone like Matt Taylor might might come in handy, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, You've got someone yeah. who's not far removed from the game, who still knows, you know, exactly what goes on in dressing rooms. Who knows how, you know, he's a, he's a younger manager, but he's like I say, he's got that respect from players, and yet, you know, he can kind of identify with the struggles that the youngsters are going through, and what, you know, rather than. I'm not saying a, a 60 or 70 year old guy or someone who hasn't really played the game, but the fact that he has and he, he knows what goes on in the dressing room, I think he could really help youngsters coming forward. And that's why I think someone like Wright, okay, might maybe have a League One opportunity, but I think if he's playing a lot of games here under someone like Matt Taylor, who can kind of show him the ropes and show him what's needed to be a top class professional, which is what he was in the Premier League, then that, that could be another, you know, another good relationship. Yeah, right, you know, he, he wasn't the finished package by any means. No. He, 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 he was desperate for a goal, he wanted probably more assists on top of the, the couple he got. Um, but, you know, he's he's shown enough, Tyreek, to, to earn another opportunity on loan here, or all part of the period. It'd be mm. nice to have him back. Um, I, just not to skate over uh, Rory Holden, um, mention a few players as well that you build a team around. He's one of them without mm-hmm. doubt. I mean, he's the best player. Um, Currently, he and, and he was last season as well. Um, exceptionally good going forward, creative on and off the ball, intelligent runs. Um, you build the team around him, but you build the team around him more centrally. Yeah. Playing as a ten, um, I wouldn't play him out wide. No. no, definitely not. And then you mentioned Wes, Wes McDonald. Wes. Wes. Oh Wes. Oh Wes. Wes. First season, electric. Earned his contract, rightly so. Brilliant. This season started off okay, mm-hmm. decent. Um, had a few decent games. You know, I always come back to the December game away at, uh, at Tranmere. Was brilliant. Scored a goal in a three-one win there. But didn't go anywhere near. No, enough. Didn't go anywhere think. near enough to, to get a contract. Um, you know, he, he was devoid of opportunities under Brian Dutton at times. Um, but when he did get the chance, and, and before that he was off form anyway, to be fair. And then when he did get a few chances under Brian, he didn't really take it. No. You know? A few flashes here and there of, of, a, of a pretty decent player, but it, just, it didn't it didn't mm. come full circle for him. Would I have been tempted to keep him possibly because of because we know what he's capable of, and I think he can get better. But at the same time, could you bring someone in who is better, bring mm. someone in um, more experienced, perhaps? It's probably worth taking the risk and letting him go for me. And then one, the very final one, Jack Nolan. Mm. Um, again, a strange one, you know, hardly any opportunities. 
few EFL trophy chances under Daryl. Daryl, well, he was pretty poor. Daryl criticised him for being overweight. Um, didn't go particularly well for that. Uh, came in for a couple of games towards the end of Daryl's reign and, and was really good. Mm. Then dropped dropped out of the face of the earth again, similar to Frank Vincent. Um, and then got one or two, you know, half opportunities on the bench here and there. But you know, he was, he was nowhere to be seen mm. basically to the, the end of the season. And um, he's a young lad who, you know, they thought they might be able to. Today, you know, nurture and, and, and create a good player out of, and he, he didn't really kick on. And no. he can't carry passengers. You've got to, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough business. You've got to, you can't keep on 19-year-olds that aren't developing. Mm. It's difficult to, to do that. You know, it's it's an opportunity for, to move on for him to move on, maybe move closer to home, and you know, get settled better, uh, and hopefully have another go to somewhere else. So midfield as a whole. Recruitment-wise, I mean, there, there needs to be there needs to be a pretty big drive, especially wide. And I would say as well, if, you know, if you're looking at, let's say, also David goes back to an eight, and you want maybe seven to nine goals from him, league goals in a season, you probably need someone else who's an attacking foe who's going to score you the same amount of goals because there's not enough goals coming from midfield this season. Rory Holden can do that. He's capable of it for sure. Um, it depends what formation Matt Taylor plays. Sure. You know, if, he, if he doesn't play wingers, if he plays a five at the back with wing backs, then it's totally different. But uh, assuming he plays wingers, I mean, you're arguably, you could arguably going to need three or four mm. wingers. Mm. They've, got, they've got none of the club. Um, arguably, you're going to need that. Midfield, you could probably, I mean, you could get away with not signing anyone. If, if you drop Ostadini back into an eight position, you could get away with it. But I would, I would like. A sort of a bigger, sturdier, defensive-minded midfielder, um, sim different to what they've got. Um, I think would be a good option. Uh, I don't want to overload on defensive-minded midfielders, but they don't have someone who is you know, particularly yeah, a, a big presence in midfield. So that that they could do with that. Um, but the wingers is the big one. Three or three or four, gen two on either side possibly. Uh, yeah. it, it could be that simple. They, they need signings there. Uh, I look at the squad cap as well. Uh, I mean, they're going to have to try and fit all this into ten players. Yeah, 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 it's gonna, yeah. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be well. I mean, you look. I mean, you say that flexibility is going to be very important. They've got to be versatile. I think yeah. that that's going to be very appealing to Matt Taylor. And that's where Rory Holden, as a possible winger, might come into it. Yeah. Um, I mean, also DB has played on the wing as well, but he was he's so much better centrally. Yeah, of he, he, and centrally, but deeper. When he arrives late, he sees the ball deeper. That's when he was way more effective. So. Um, I would have those two as central players holding an Ostevi and I would invest in them for sure. And in the midfielders, that's Thursday. So we're a bit loopy earlier on, but uh, you know, the sun's getting to us. Uh, we'll, I promise we'll be more professional on Friday when we see the strikers.